Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another Wednesday night Bible study at Consuming Fire Teaching and Deliverance Ministries in Sacramento, California, where our pastor and overseer is Pastor Doris Harrell. We are going to be continuing on our discussion questions tonight regarding our lesson of last week, which is the human heart. And speaking about pride, we learned quite a bit of areas and we're gonna be going over our questions this evening. So I'm just gonna do a little brief of the areas that we covered on last week. So we were speaking about the companions of pride, which are haughtiness, scoffing, and boasting. We also spoke about pride versus God and pride being the ultimate sin against God. And another area was how pride opposes the first principle of wisdom. We also studied in regarding about pride being an abomination to God. And then it, we went on to study about the consequences of pride. The first consequence is shame. After shame, contention. And after contention, destruction. So that was just a brief recap on the areas that we covered last night. So now we will go into our discussion questions. And our first question is going to be answered by our very own Deaconess Jefferson. And the question is, are you looking to identify pride in yourself or in others? Yes, so or um, both. Uh, number one, for myself, I put yes to avoid the pitfalls that are the consequences of pride, um, the shame and the destruction and all that comes with it. And in others, uh, well, it says or others, but I put in, in others, I answered it. Um, in others, I would say to avoid the, you know, the conflict, the strife, and uh, the uh, things that come with pride in others that, you know, destroys relationships, number one relationship with the Lord. And so, um, yeah, that's another people to avoid the conflict. So, yes. Amen. Beautiful. Thank you, Deaconess. And Deaconess, you also took question number two. And that question is, why is it so difficult to see pride in ourselves, but so easy to detect in others? Ooh, well, number one, it's easier to point the finger. It's easier to point mm -hmm. the finger at other people. And, um, and it's a negative characteristic, you know? So, you know, everybody wants to, you know, present their best self. So to be identified as a prideful person, it's a negative characteristic that, you know, nobody wants to uh, really admit that they have. And then um, because we're always assessing people, you know, our eyes look out, you know, we're assessing people, we're assessing situations. So it's easier for us to see something and others, because we're not doing self-examination all the time, you know, we should be, the believers should be examining them to, themselves, but because we're always looking, you know, um, at people, you know, based on our values, our belief system, so it's just easier because we're always assessing situations, but um, it's a negative characteristic that we don't want to, it's just easier to point the finger. Amen. That was so well said. Deaconess, thank you. I really like the point part when you were speaking about how um, it's, it, uh, you referred to it being as negative and how we don't want to see that in ourselves. Yeah. So it's so much easier to, you know, look out and find it in someone else because we don't want it associated to ourselves. But um, that was so beautiful. Thank you so very much. Welcome. And our next question, question number three, was with Sister Shante. So, Sister Shante, why do God and pride not mix? What is it that causes the 
enmity between the two. How did Satan's pride cause the enmity between himself and God? And you have your scripture reference of Tim, 1 Timothy 3 and 6. I believe I put God and pride don't mix because pride is an abomination to the Lord and it's an ultimate sin against God. And it is the assumption that man is self-sufficient and important enough to compete with God's greatness, magnitude, strength, and wisdom. And it also causes haughtiness, scoffing, boasting, and it causes enmity between God, God and pride. And then, uh, cause it was kind of a three part answer. So I also had in Proverbs 8, 13, um, to fear the Lord is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior and perverse speech. Proverbs 11, two, when pride comes, then comes disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. And then mm. Proverbs 16, five says, the Lord detests all, the, all of the proud of heart. Be sure of this, that they will not go unpunished. So pride and selfish ambition. And um, it was because of Satan, um, like he was pro, uh, proud, prideful because of his beauty. And like another answer that comes from um, 1 Timothy 3, 6 is like being puffed up. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much. You really referenced some very good points there. And you know, it's about uh, us learning. And I'm so glad that you mentioned humility in there because you know, of course, when we were learning our lesson that the that um, Christian moral is humility. And that's what we wanna concentrate to just become is walking in, in humility because God honors humility and rewards, but he does not with pride. So. Beautiful, thank you so very much for your participation. So our next question, are there any questions at this time? Cause we're making good time. So I'm gonna um, see maybe at every third or fourth question if there's any comments or um, brief um, in, input feedback on the question. So I'll pause now and see if someone would like to maybe comment or provide feedback on the three questions that we've had so far. No? Okay. So question number four is with Sister Smart. And your question is, what is the beginning of wisdom? And well, you have three questions, a three part. Yeah. What is the beginning of wisdom is your first. What does the proud man lack is your second. And therefore, what is he is your third. Okay. Well, for the first question is, what is the beginning of wisdom? We have scripture for that. And that's in Proverbs 9, verse 10. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So that answers that question. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. So having an understanding of the Lord and the fear of the Lord is uh, the beginning of wisdom. Okay, and the second one, what does the proud man lack? And we have scripture for that, which is uh, Proverbs 8 and 13 which it reads, the fear of the Lord, which goes back to the fear of the Lord, is, is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil ways, and the, then, and the, what's that, forward? Forward. Now, forward, 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 mm -hmm. okay, mouth to do hate. So that's like, uh, you know, everything you do is just evil coming out of your mouth and you, you know, don't have, uh, you just don't have uh, 
compassion for the other person and you're just hateful. Okay, and then the next scripture that has the uh, that reference that would be 22, Proverbs 22, um, 8 and 22. I think that's it. No, 22. No, we're going to 22 and 4. Amen. 22 and 4 now. 22 and 4. Okay, and it reads, by humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honors and, and, and life. Okay, well, when you don't have, uh, well, what did I have down? Let me see. Uh, I said, the fear of the Lord and, oh, when you don't have the fear of the Lord, you lack having what he has to offer you, all the riches and all the glory and the, you know, all the good things in life, okay? And you have no shame if you're a, a prideful man. You ain't got no shame, okay? So that's that. And then the last question, therefore, what is he? I couldn't, I didn't want to say he's a, that F-O-O-L man, but to me, he's a man that don't have any uh, regards to the Lord. So that would make him not a very uh, prideful man. I'm not sure. I don't think I got that question right. But anyway, that's what I have. So you guys can help me out where I went wrong. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. Yes, and amen, and thank you so much for um, sharing your answers. I'm going to just um, give a little feedback on um, what does the, because you got the, the, the uh, what is the beginning of wisdom? You got that down. Mm -hmm. that was what does the proud man lack? And um, one of the things, the main thing that the proud man lacks is humility because pride is the exact opposite of humility. So because they're they're boastful and they're they're constantly building they self up and and speaking about themselves and wanting everybody to see they're they're not um they're not humble. So uh, that is what the proud man lacks as far as my understanding is that humility and in the scripture that you read proverbs 22 and 4 speaks about it speaks about that by humility and the fear of the lord are riches and honor and life so even without the riches, it's just such a blessing because you not only have the riches, but you also obtain honor. And then you also have life. So humility brings the riches and honor and life. And I'm going to well, ask Pastor. Thank you for clarifying um, that for me. Amen. On the, therefore, what is he? Um, I, I know that in the beginning, we, we, we learned about how the foolish man saith in his heart that there is no God. I know, I'm not sure if that's Bible, if that's um, another class, but we learned that. And so when you were speaking about, um, you didn't want to call, say that word, I know. I, I tell you, the more we learn, the more we want to keep it straight, right? So I don't like that word either no more. It's very difficult to say once you really realize what it is that you're saying. It's hard to keep on saying things that used to, that may have once I came easy because we are learning the knowledge of God. And the more we learn and we apply it to our life, the more cautious and the more aware we are of what we say. So, um, you know, therefore, I mean, one of the things he is, is they are going to be shamed. You mentioned that 
that they didn't have no shame. And that's what they think. But we also learn in the lesson that they will, that shame is one of the consequences of pride because they're so busy being boasted up. But when it all begins to, when the consequences begin to come, shame was the first one. And, to, and from what I was gathering is, and it is the least of the punishment. So if you can get it at shame, you don't have to go on to contention. And if you get it at contention, then destruction, you can, you can avoid. I mean, you'll have to pay consequences, but um, you want to try to get it at the least punitive level. But if you don't, then that pride, it just, you know, it'll have you just destroy yourself and everything and, 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 and everyone around you. So pastor, would you like to please have some words on that? Uh, I do on that last part. Therefore, what is he? Mm -hmm. Well, you, you said scripture, sister Jeanette and Sharon said, I know what he is, but I don't want to say it <laughs> because it's a shame and very sad, but the scripture speaks. So you can always read the word. He is, according to Psalms 14 and 1, the fool mm. has said in his heart, there is no God. Mm. So a prideful person, to a prideful person, God means nothing. And that is what that is one of the saddest things. So you can tell them God's word. We're talking about people that say they're Christian. You can tell them do this and do that, and they just insist on having their own way. So they're not, you, you notice the Bible says they said it in their heart. So they're not saying it with their mouth. With their mouth, they're saying, Lord, Lord. But with their disobedience, they're saying, there ain't no God. There ain't no God, because they insist on having their own way. And so he is what Psalms 14 and 1 says. So Sister Sharon, you can go to Psalm 14 and 1 and answer, therefore, what is he? So it's can I read it for Psalm yes, 14 please. and 1? We can't okay. call that, but the Bible speaks of what it says. Know. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abom uh, abominable work. There is none that does it good. That's 14 Amen. and 1. So he is that, what so he is. That, yeah, and, and that's what the Bible says he is. And we see it every day, all the time we see it. Mm -hmm. You know, when you try to tell someone about the word of God and God, and they refuse to humble themselves, they refuse, they absolutely refuse. The Bible says, they, they may say with their mouth, oh, I'm a Christian, I'm this and that, but it's your behavior that points out to who, what you're thinking. Because uh -huh. a, a man acts out what's in him. So if, if you, what's in your heart is going to come out of you. And if you, is everybody tell you what to do, what to do, and you are constantly doing just the opposite, what you say in your heart, there ain't no God. There ain't no God. I don't have to do that. <laughs> Amen. So that's the answer to that. Therefore, what is he? It's right there. <laughs> Amen. And it's sad. It's sad. It's very sad when you see one, because you, you know what, when you see a person like that, you see a, a wreck about to happen. And you can't stop them. That you can't stop them because they are too prideful. And it's, it's the saddest thing you ever saw in your life to see somebody, a wreck going to happen. I'm talking about wrecking their life on mm. the way to happen. It's the saddest thing there is. Amen. So that's, that's what I wanted to say about that. So you was right. You just know that it's not good to say it. But you can speak the word, though. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, so much. And you know, you said it. It is so sad when you do see what's about to happen. But they're so prideful and so arrogant and so full of themselves till you actually, in some cases, can't even keep it from happening. You just literally have to watch it 
happen. And it is, it's, it is, it's very heartening, disheartening, you know, for, to, to even watch it or even to like, or see it before it even happened. So our next question, question number five is our sister Diana. And sister Diana, your question is, why can't pride admit that it is wrong? And I'm standing in for Sister Diana on that one. Oh, okay. Okay. And the answer is on the in the lesson on one uh, C. Uh, they can't admit they're wrong because pride's greatest fear mm. is that someone will notice not notice the greatness it sees in itself. So that's why it boasts of itself. So it sees a greatness in itself. And so it has to boast because the greatest fear is uh, uh, if I don't say something, if I don't, then nobody's gonna notice it. So mm -hmm. uh, the scripture that I found for that is Proverbs 27, two, that's under that. And uh, it says, uh, let another man praise thee and not thy own mouth. Yes. A stranger, not thy own lips. Don't let, don't, because the prideful person goes around talking about, I'm this and I'm that and I'm this and everything you say, they got some negative to say bad, you know, they, you, they're unteachable. And so um, they simply refuse to, um, uh, let me see, what's that? Uh, wait, where is that question? It can't admit it's wrong because to its to it, a prideful person, listen, they, they ain't wrong. Everybody else wrong, but not them. They can't <laughs> because they think like somebody said they were cast me out or fooling themselves or something. They just can't admit when they're wrong. And again, there you go with a very sad situation. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's impossible for them to admit they're wrong because I'll, I'll tell you something else. They've taken on the spirit. They've taken on the spirit of Satan because that's the thing that made him fall. And uh, it's, it's very sad. And they don't realize it, that they are operating under a demonic influence. And so they, they just, they can't. Amen. And if nobody else say something good about them, they're going to say about they said they boasted because that's their greatest fear <laughs> right there. Mm -hmm. And so it's impossible for them to admit they're wrong. See, a, a, a person, a humble person hears the word and they repent and say, oh, I Oh boy, I thought about my ways, but a private person can't do that. But see, they right and everybody else is wrong. They can go to this pastor and get, you know, with a situation and they're going to tell them this and oh, not can't get a Go to another one. They're going to, all oh, a pastor going to do a change the same thing. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, they all wrong. But the only one that ain't wrong is a private person. It is, it's so hard for them to admit they're wrong. And they have to, they have to knock their heads to find it out. Very sad. Mm -hmm. Very sad. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Pastor. Enough? Yes. People like that. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Well, Pastor, you have the next question. Your I question do. is question number six. Yes, In what okay. way is pride competitive? Oh. Oh my God, it's a shameful God. Pride competes with God. And basically a prideful person is saying, I know as good as God knows, you know? And so uh, it started, Sister uh, Shante made a, 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 mentioned it. It started with Satan. In Isaiah 14, 12 through 14, he said, I will, I will, I will, I will. He said it four times. I will exalt my king. I will be like the most high. I will ascend to the north. I will. So when you hear a person that's constantly saying, I, 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 they're talking about them. And so mm -hmm. Satan is the author of pride. He's what he's the one that it was found in. He is the uh the uh the father of it, just like he's the father of lies, 
He's the father of pride. And so when pride was found in him, and you, you can all refer to that by going to Isaiah 14, 12 to 14, when you get a chance, when pride was found in him, they cast him out of heaven. They threw him out. Immediately, they didn't even deal with it. He fell out. They threw him out of there like lightning. And he fell to the earth. And then he went down into the garden. And uh, now we can go there, Genesis 3, 1 through 5. And he went down in the garden and brought that sin of pride to Eve. And she fell for it. So remember, pride is evil. It's from the devil. Now, we talk about foolish pride. There is another boasting that's all right. But this one here, we know exactly what we're talking about. So in, in Genesis 3, 1 through 3, uh, it says the serpent, now this is Satan cast out of heaven. Remember, he fell because of pride. That's what made him fall. He said, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will do this. I will do, I will basically do what I want. I'm going to have people worshiping me just like God got people worshiping him. And God didn't even deal with it. He cast him out just like that. Then he fell into the earth and he challenged the woman. The Bible says he was more subtle than any beast of the field. And he challenged the woman and said, uh, did God say that you uh, cannot eat of every tree? And the woman talked with him. And say, we can eat of the, the, the fruit of the trees, but we can't eat of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden. Um, because God said, if you eat of it, you're going to die. And I'm paraphrasing this. And so the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die. So the first thing he did was call God a lie. So here he is exalting himself. I'm going to tell you what God meant. Amen. And uh, for God does know in the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes will be opened and you shall be as God's knowing good and evil. Now, basically what that means is, what he was saying is, you don't need God to tell you what's good and what's evil. You don't need God to, to tell you that you can, you can determine that yourself. And isn't that the world we're living in today? People don't know the difference between good and evil. And you can't tell them that that right there is wrong. They're just as prideful, you know, all kind of, well, hey, look at the, look at the, uh, uh, the movement in the world today. P-R-I-D-E. You ever looked at that? The gay and lesbian movement? Pride. I, I, anybody ever put that together? So, surely you guys have seen that, right? Yes. Danetta? Oh yes, we've seen. I've seen it. Yes, yeah, and then the 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 uh, the uh, the wanting to take the rainbow. You know what I'm saying? The covenant yeah. is all. You know, and yeah, changing he, the language. Yeah, yeah. That's their banner. Their banner is P R I D E. It comes from Satan. God, yeah. our Creator, can't tell yeah. us what to do. Basically, that's mm -hmm. where it came from, right? Mm -hmm. Mm. he can't tell us what to do yeah. he can't tell us what's good and what's evil and that's what the devil told Eve and she bought it and behind her all this came down on us and so um, so it, he first it pride was first found in Satan then he brought it down to Eve and let's look at Proverbs 8 13 that comes out of the uh, the lesson there Proverbs 8 and 13 and I believe two of y'all alluded to this one, Proverbs 8, 13. Let me get there. Proverbs 8. I got to get back to Proverbs. I'm away in Genesis. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you know, a lot of times it's good to go back in the beginning. 8 and 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate what? Evil. Evil. And what's the next word? Pride. Pride and arrogancy 
and the evil way mm -hmm. and the fraud mouth do i hate why because all Lord, of that Lord comes mouth. from satan mm -hmm. every bit of that it started in heaven in satan it was found in satan pride was what made him fall it was found in satan he took it down to eve they fell mm -hmm. and that's why it says the fear of the lord is to uh -huh. hate evil to hate pride mm -hmm. to hate arrogancy to hate the evil way to hate the fire of mouth because it's from the devil God, it's from the devil I know, and deacon has her hand up yes, yes deacon. I wanted, yes i wanted to read that um from the uh amplified oh yeah maybe i would have understood it better if i had read it uh oh sorry yeah. okay so it reads, the reverent fear and worshipful awe of the Lord includes the hatred of evil, pride, arrogance, the evil way, and perverted and twisted speech I hate. Amen. Because it all comes from the devil. He's the author of pride. And those that can't see that are blinded. But we see it really clear. We can see it. Like I said, go, an accident beginning to happen. Sister Sharon, read down in the Bible that the one that you normally, you have a good, clear, okay. whatever that one is. Okay, it's the, uh, uh, this uh, uh, contemporary English version. Okay, yeah. uh, that's 8 and 13, Proverbs 8 yeah. and 13. If you respect the Lord, you will hate evil. I hate pride and conceit and con deceitful lies. That's where it reads. Amen. Shall I and, read and it why, again? Why? No, it's, it's fine. Why okay. I hate it? Why I hate it? Why would we hate pride? Why? Because it originated in Satan. It's one of his greatest tools. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It is the exact opposite of God. It is competitive, it's competing with God. It's saying what, what, what Satan said in the garden to Eve, you don't need God to tell you what's good and what's evil. You can determine that by yourself. It's basically what he said. And that's basically what pride is. You, know, you could go, uh, like I said, people go from this pastor to that pastor looking for a different answer. And every time they're going to get the, the same answer, but they are, nah, I'm going I'm to go over here. If you go to the right path, people teach the sound out, you're going to always get the word of God. But they compete against God because, I mean, they don't know what they're doing. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. You know, it's very sad, though. Amen. And then the last scripture on that is Proverbs 3, 5 through 7. This is what God says for us to do. Um, let me get back to my question. Uh, why, what is, uh, in what way is pride competitive? And basically, in Thinking that you you know you don't need God to tell you what's good and evil. That's what you said. I don't need God to tell me that. I got my own common sense. I don't need to the the the, 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 the whatever God said to do. I don't need that. I don't need Him to tell me that. I mean, that's pride, you know. And they they're absolutely wrong. But this is what God said for for us to do. Proverbs three five through seven. Uh, you're gonna see something here. It says, uh, and this is one of the ones in the lesson, uh, five says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thine own understanding. See there? In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Is he not wise in thine own eyes? Fear the Lord and depart from evil. They're talking about pride here. Pride. Don't lean to your own understanding. If God said, do this that way, then humble yourself, but see the practical person can't humble themselves. They said in their heart, they know God, I don't need to do that. In fact, basically what they're saying is, they, they saying what Satan told Eve in the garden. He said, I don't. I can know good and evil for myself. And that's exactly what Satan told uh, uh, Eve. God does know that in the day you eat of, 
then you'll be like them, knowing good and evil. We don't, without God telling us, without the Holy Spirit telling us, we can't, a lot of times we can't tell the difference between the holy and the profane. It is people out there telling us that we are wrong and trying to cram down our throats their profanities and their abominations. And it, it ain't just homosexuality. It's a whole lot of sin, the sin of pride. But it's very interesting that that movement would be called pride. Ain't that something? My God, the thing that is uh, the very opposite of God. The, in, in, and basically what they're saying is we're in competition against God. We don't have to do what he says. We make our own. We can decide for ourselves what's good and what's evil. Amen. I didn't mean to preach. <laughs> Amen. I never Amen. thought about it like that. You know, I didn't know. Right. But, you, but when you look that at it, a very good point. Because yeah. I did I, I didn't either, Sister Diana. I, I never yeah. thought of it like that either. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, me that's, either. That's, I just knew about the rainbow, uh, you know. Yeah. But yeah. Mm -hmm. None of us mm -hmm. did. <laughs> yeah. And when you, no. and this, oh, the Holy Spirit is teaching this. Remember, we submitted to the Holy Spirit. Mm. He teaches us. I mean, why would anyone call their movement pride? Mm. Because God mm. hates pride. It's a uh, competitive, uh, uh. they're in competition against God. Mm. Yeah. Uh, by, the uh, very, uh. by the very name. So, but what do we do? We pray for them. Father, forgive them, for they know not yeah. what they do. And pride was found in Lucifer. That's where it was first found. Then he brought it down to Adam and Eve and said, you don't need God to tell you what's good. And you can determine that for yourself. Basically, that's what it's, And that's what a prideful person does. You can tell them all day long. You know, they don't want to hear what you got to say. Pastor, <laughs> when, we have, when we have the open forum, can we talk a little bit more about that? That's, yes, ma'am. Please bring it please. to my remembrance. Yeah. Yes. Yes, mm. ma'am. Yeah. All right. So I'm done with mine. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, thank you so much, Pastor, for thank the enlightenment you. and yeah. just the, you know, bringing things. And that's what we want to do. We want to learn because um, yeah. as, you know, some of, uh, you know, some of us are, are in agree. I, I never thought of, you know, that. And I think that, um, and thank you so much for bringing that out because pride, you know, it, it, it already speaks about it being the abomination. You know, we know it's the abomination of God and it, it's, you know, so thank you so much. Yes, um, thank you. <laughs> you, break, you got us down the line. Break, break, <laughs> break, yeah. yeah. Yes. yes, Lord. <laughs> I agree. We need a praise break because oh, that, that was really rich and just enlightening to something I never even, you know. So we just thank oh, God please. for yes. opening our understanding so thank that we can walk, you know, right. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we can't even walk thank without it online. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, yes. And we pray for them because yes, we know Lord. that yes. people are is headed yeah. for destruction. Yes. Ooh. That devil, I tell you, I can't understand him. I can't stand him. <laughs> they kicked him out of heaven beyond our pride and he went to Eden. Uh -huh. and, and, and she told me, she saw the fruit to be make one wise. It did not make her. Well, it made her a wise, but it was a corrupt evil. Well, we'll yeah. do that in uh, open forum. Praise yeah. God. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so now we have question seven. And Sister Gloria, are you up for answering question seven? Okay. Does, okay, um, I'm going to read it. Does pride receive more pleasure from having what it wants or from having more than the next person? Well, the first part of that, I, I found... Uh, verses, uh, but it was, I didn't have a verse, but it was Luke 14 and 11. And it says, for whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased or Lord, 
you know, lowered down or disgraced. And he that mm -hmm. humbles himself shall be exalted. And uh, the first question, the answer is uh, no. Um, he don't get, uh, pride doesn't get pleasure out of uh, having something. Uh, they only get pleasure out of um, the second one was having more than the next person. They only get pleasure mm. out of that so that they can compare themselves mm. with, with you um, uh, to make themselves feel that they're above you. And uh, they're, they're not recognizing it as God's gift. And um, I've seen experienced pride and uh, pride has broken families and mm. uh, but pulled kids away from other relatives that met them well. And um, uh, anyway, I've experienced pride and like that. And then I had a woman come to my house. She was a Christian woman. And uh, I'm putting up my quote, quote, and, and um, they were doing a funeral here. And when they came, her and her friends, they um, had forgot their cooking pots. And so they wanted some cooking pots. Well, I didn't have enough pots that they wanted and bigger pots as they wanted to cook the way they cook, you know. And uh, so um, they made some little comments and I could see her friends with their eyebrow. You know how you do your eyebrow, mm, you know, and the, you know, the head all high and mighty, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they had all these pots, but, you know, they go overboard. Pride people go overboard with um, um, how they, you know, make people feel trying to show off, you know, is what, well, how you gonna come all the way up here and forget your pots? That's what you came here to do, cook, you know? So um, anyway, it was to catch me off guard, I guess. But, um, <laughs> But uh, anyway, um, um, pride, yeah, it, it's a it's a horrible thing because I've I've had experiences with it myself. People seeing themselves, they see themselves as more better than what they really is, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so no to the first question. They don't get pleasure from having what they want. They have they may have a whole lot. They ain't getting no pleasure from that. They may have a whole lot of money. They ain't getting pleasure from that. They get more pleasure that they have more than the next person, <laughs> more than the other person. So, um, um, anyway, I could go on a little bit more with this pride thing, but um, <laughs> it's um, yeah, <laughs> spiritual. Have to have a hand raised too. Spiritual decay. <laughs> Yes, yes. Ooh, ooh, and another thing, heavy. you know, ooh. another thing too was that um when we were coming up as kids, they used pride in a different way. Because I've had them ask me, have you no pride? You know, well, I took that as you know, hey, I'm supposed to have pride. I'm supposed to be proud, you know. Well. Pride means you need to achieve something. In fact, I thought you achieved something, you know. That's how I thought they meant it. Don't, don't you want to do better? Or don't you have no pride, you know? So I grew up knowing the wrong meaning of pride. So it's good to have Bible study and uh, and see what pride really is. Mm. Um, that's enough. <laughs> Amen. Before and thank start, you so much. Before I start coughing. Pastor hand is up. I see. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Sister Gloria and Pastor. Yes, ma'am. Amen. So, so you can see that when people, prideful people, when they spew that pride, that proudness at you, you feel that ab the abomin abomination of it, the degradation of it. Because the only thing that pride does, and there is a good pride. That comes down here in question 12. Uh, but the one we talk about, the one from the devil. And so, but 
when they did that to you, you felt the abomination of it. You felt the degradation of it. It was meant to do that. It's meant to make you feel uh, low. Uh, it's meant to stick a knife in you. That's all pride does. It's absolutely gross. And uh, so if you understand where the, the source of it is, then you can have compassion on them. They just is pitiful. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm. just, I mean, you really can have compassion. And, and that's why, like you said, it is a good thing to get Bible study because in Bible study, we're getting an understanding. You know, people looking mm -hmm. down on somebody else. How, I mean, we all go to the bathroom the same way. And you have the nerve to look down on another human being. <laughs> That's pride. And it's an it's an abomination. You feel it. It's gross. It's grievous. It's foul. It's ugly. You know, so all you can do is just say, well, thank God I know the truth. And uh, like Laura said, you should have brought your, should have brought your pots. <laughs> you should have come here expecting. But that's and uh, And she said they're a Christian. Like I'm saying, it, it, you don't care what, you, what hat you wear. You have to watch out for that rascal. That's why I just hate, hate pride, hate arrogancy, hate haughtiness. You know, I've seen people in the church mistreat people. Pe haughty people mistreat other people. And I'm like, wow, I can't shoot, treat Jesus as sheep like that. But enough of that. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, Pastor, you know, as you were going on and you were speaking about it's foul and it's and it's um, and you were naming all of the, you know, some of the just the characteristics of it, and just you know, and I remember as you were going on the list, and you were identifying it, and the word came to me, and it's destructive. That is what pride is. It yeah. is destructive. I don't know if Sister Brittany's here yet. So what we're gonna do is move on to question nine because she took question eight. And then if she doesn't show up, then we'll we'll just, you know, see if someone wants to volunteer to answer it. Question number nine is with, it was Sister Smart. And your yeah. question is, why can two proud people never resolve their differences or work together? Well, I wrote down because two pride people, proud people, they think the same. So they're both trying to seek glory for themselves. So therefore, they're going to have conflicts. They're not going to agree on anything because they all want the glory for themselves. And they don't even love God. You know, they don't have the love of God in them so how can they be uh have compassion for the next person if you don't love god mm. so that's what i had that's my answer to that <laughs> amen <laughs> and, and, amen it, it, because they are both so, so wanted for themselves, themselves and that's it they ain't got time to, to 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 praise nobody else they want all the pray, praise for themselves amen, amen. Amen. Now, is Mr. Arie with us tonight? Uh, no. Okay, so we'll come back to question 10. Um, question 11 is for S Sister Jeanette. And the question is, many vices will bring people together. You may find fellowship joking, and friends among drunkards or unchaste people. Does pride ever bring people together? No. So, yeah, no. Um, it does just the opposite. You know, and even though it says many vices, so it actually identified, um, you know, like, things that are negative or not really good because it identified it as 
vices. Many vices will sometimes bring people together. You know, and you will find fellowship amongst people joking. And sometimes joking can be taken out of, you know, out of context as well and become very hurtful. And, and you know, joking, if you're not in the wrong, joking can almost be a form of scoff because you can pretend pretend as though you're making a joke about something but when you make the person or a person the joke then it's no longer that you're joking but you're more teasing that person and 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 yeah. making and making the 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 you know we've heard the blunt of the joke about someone and that makes a person feel bad, that tears a person down, that hurt, that's hurtful. And um, yeah. then it spoke about the, the um, friends among drunkards, you know, even sometimes drunkards actually, you know, they come together, they, they you know, share the, share the drink because they, you know, is it healthy for them? No. Um, is it good for them? No. But they come to, and with that, they still can have a fellowship or a coming together because of the common need that, you know, oh, I need, you know, well, you know, or vice that they think they need. Um, and to satisfy the urge, I guess I should say. So, because it's not a need, but at that point, it is a need for them. It's identified as a need. And the same thing with unchaste people. Unchaste is about being unclean. Even unclean people can actually, you know, um, come together, even though they're unclean. But as far as pride, it's too full of itself to bring somebody together, to bring, you know, because to bring someone together, first of all, you have to embrace and kind of, you know, bring them in and nurture them in. But pride is just too full of itself. It's not thinking about nobody but itself. It don't want nobody but itself. And it will just destroy sooner or later everything and everyone, including the person that is housed in itself. So that's my answer for that one is, um, you know, pride doesn't, it don't bring people together, but people do come together and, you know, associated to, to other vices. So if there's no comments, we're gonna have a question twit. Amen, Sister Gloria. <laughs> Sister Twit. Uh, 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 question 12 is with Sister Diana again, and Pastor kind of spoke about this a little earlier. Is there any positive kind of pride that we should have? And Sister Diana, that's, oh, you're answering that one, Pastor? Yes, for okay. Sister Diana. Okay. And yes, there is a positive kind of pride because the devil would have us, um, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And he uh, degradates our self-esteem. We, we should all understand that we're created in the image and likeness of God. And that every human being that comes on the earth is lit by God. Pride outside of God. That's what we've been talking about. Pride outside of God. But self-esteem is a, a certain kind of pride. And that's a good kind. And that's what Glory was alluding to when she said, don't, don't you have any pride? You do these things, don't you have any pride? I mean, don't you know who you are in God? Not pride that says, I can do this and I'm gonna make all y'all, you know, accept this. We're not talking about that kind of pride. So self-esteem, there should be self-worth, self-esteem for everyone, understanding who they are in Christ. He, God made every human being equal. Every one of us are the same in Christ. He made us in his image and in his likeness, and no one is better than the other. In fact, one of the things, I don't know if you guys understand it, but the, the gay, the G-A-Y, that's, they're saying 
we're as good as you. That's what that means, good as you. But th what they don't understand is we, everyone is the same. You are as good as everybody else, but that sin is an abomination. Everybody is as good as anybody. It's the sin, amen. So we should all have a, a good self-esteem. If we come from people that put you down, you're gonna have a poor self-esteem. So that's where pride is gonna have three scriptures for you. And um, so a humble person, a humble person can have a good self-esteem or in, in a good uh, sense of pride without being prideful in a, you know, I'm just all this, that, and the other. A humble person can have a good self-esteem. So we're going to look at three scriptures. Let me see where they are here. Uh, let's look at uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 1. 1 <laughs> Corinthians 1. This is the, the good pride. And, um, and so a humble person, a person that has a good self-esteem, doesn't need to prove to anything, anybody, who they are. That's why they're not boastful. That's why they're not loud. That's why they're not uh, talking about themselves. They don't need to prove anything. They have that esteem. Well, it's a, I call it, instead of self-esteem, a God esteem. I'm created in the image in the life of God. And, and really, if the good as you people G-A-Y, understood that they're just as good as anybody else. They wouldn't have to go around trying to prove that they're gay, good as you. Yes, you are, because you're created in the image and likeness of God, just like we all are. So we don't, a humble person don't have to go around proving nothing. So let's look at 1 Corinthians uh, 1, 1 Corinthians 1, and look who God chooses um, these are humble people, but they know they're creating the image and likeness of God. 26, it says, for you see your calling, brethren, how not many wise after the flesh, you know, so up, know who they are. Not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and base things of the world and things which are despised has God chosen. Yes, and things which are nothing to bring to nothing things that are. Why? That no flesh should glory in his presence. Mm -hmm. We should not be glory. I'm, I'm all this, I'm that. Just be satisfied that we're created in the image and likeness of God. If we all understood that we're created equal, and that we're created in the image and likeness of God, there would be no trying to make myself better than you. Because I'm not better than you. I'm not better than anybody. None of us are better than anybody. We're all created equal in the eyes of God. That's a God esteem. That's the esteem we need. But flesh, that's uh, I'm this, I'm that, I'm this. God doesn't choose them kind of people. He chooses people that are humble. And he says here, that no flesh should glory in his presence. He, God will not have a person uh, uh, speaking his word, a glory, and because of what they do, they take it from God and they glory in themselves. Now it ain't about God no more. It's about them. And we see that a lot, amen, in, in re religion. But of him are you in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, now here's that pride. He that glorieth or boasts, let him do what? Glory in the Lord. Glory the Lord. So, so there's your good pride. Every here, here's a good pride. Everything I got came from God. That's <laughs> the good pride. Amen. Ain't nothing I got that God didn't give me. There's the good pride. That's that, that's that one right there. Amen. 
And uh, look at 2 Corinthians 7 and 4. I see your hand, Sister uh, Shante. I'm going to give it to you in a minute. 2 Corinthians 7 and 4. Look at that one. 2 Corinthians 7 and 4. Everything I've got come from you. 2 Corinthians 7, verse 4. And Paul said, great is my boldness of speech toward you. Great is my glorying of you. I am filled with comfort. I am exceedingly joyful in our tribulation. He said, I'm boasting. I'm glorying. But it's all in the Lord. Remember what uh, uh, Jeremiah said? Don't let the mighty man boast in his might or the wise man in his wisdom or the rich man is rich, but if you're going to boast, if you going to be prideful, rather, be prideful in the Lord. Boast that you know him, that he, uh, so we can, we can glory in the Lord, we can boast in the Lord, and you can say, oh yes, oh yes, everything I got, he came from him. So that's, that's, the, that's the only good pride I know. Amen. And so when a person is uh, like when someone was would say to my sister, "Don't you um, what do, how, how you said that?" But uh, uh, why did you say that? <laughs> Amen. Have you no pride? Have you no pride? They're basically saying, "Don't you know who you are? You're created in the, you're better than that. You're better than that, and you don't you don't really have to prove. Just be who you are." Just be who you are. You know, you don't have to prove nothing. You have to go around telling people I'm this, that, and the other. I will, I will, I did, I, 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 I. Oh, that's gross. Instead, him. Let's just tell the truth. We can't even walk without God holding our hands. Let's just tell the truth. Can't do it without God holding our hands. We cannot do it. So we can boast. Yeah, there's good pride. And it's that boasting is in the Lord. Amen. So there's quite a few scriptures in there about knowing God. And, and so he don't, he don't choose people that, that boast in themselves because they're going to go around glorying in themselves. My hands did this. I did this. I, you ain't done nothing. You couldn't even wake up without God. <laughs> so hallelujah. So that's the answer to that one. Yes, there's, there's good pride. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I know that the people of the PRIDE movement is trying to say that. And what I'm saying to them, you don't have to prove anything to anybody. You create in the image and the life of God, just like, just like we are. We all are. You don't have to start a movement to prove that. You don't have to say, G-A-Y, I'm good as you. You're good as us. All the same. We're all creating. That was not but the devil di dividing us. So we're going to fight this fight and, 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 and save them folk. I pray them for them. Amen. So they'll find their God esteem. Forget that self-esteem. My esteem is in God. Hallelujah. Amen. Sister, uh, 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 Sister Shantae uh, has a hand answered. That's all yes, I have on Sister that. Shantae. Thank you, Pastor. Thank Sister Shantae, you, you wanted to speak? Yes. Amen. I agree. Those were the scriptures that were coming, um, that were on my heart. Um, thank God for his confidence. Um, in Jeremiah 9, 23, it says, Thus says the Lord, let not a wise man boast of his wisdom and let not the mighty man boast of his might. Let not a rich man boast of his riches. And then also in 1 Corinthians 1.31, it says, so that just as it is written, let him boast, boast in the Lord. And then 2 Corinthians 10.17 says, but he who boasts is to boast in the Lord. And one more, Psalm uh, 34, 2 says, my soul will make its boast in the Lord. The humble will hear it and rejoice. A lot of times when people ask me, um, what do you mix with? I, I like to say, <laughs> I joke around, but I'm honest and serious. I say Jesus in Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Now that's a praise break there, Sister Jeanette. <laughs> that's a praise break. Let's, let's get a praise break, y'all. We need to boast in the Lord. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 
Because we're all created in the image and the likeness of God. And Lord, we want you to just open their eyes so they don't have to prove nothing. They just need to come out of sin. That's all. Come mm. out of sin. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. I'm amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Sister Shante. And, uh, <laughs> you know, Pastor, when you were speaking about um, them, you know, just want that the, the wanting to be to be acknowledged as good as anyone else. I never knew what that meant either. Um, I thought about that companion, that boasting and where it speaks and it says, Pride's greatest fear is that someone else will not notice the greatness it sees in itself. And as you were speaking about, you know, going forth with the pride and, you know, wanting to be great and that good as you, that part of our lesson came, you know, and you're right. You don't have to, to, to boast about it when you, because um, we're all, God created mankind. He created mankind. So just to see ourselves in God is, is, is the key. So thank both of you, yeah, Sister Shante and Pastor. Um, so we're going to do question 13, and um, then we'll go back to question uh, eight and 10 for Sister Brittany and Sister Arie. Sister, uh, Sister Jeanette, myself has um, question 13. Some have said humility is, elu is an elusive quality because once you think you finally got it, you lose it. Why is that true? And so I looked up that um, word elusive. And the elusive, it's an, humility is an elusive quality. Elusive means difficult to find, hard to achieve. So humility is, 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 is a difficult quality to come about if you are operating in yourself. And we constantly be, we constantly grow in humility. So that's another part. Humility are there's levels of humility. That's why it's difficult to achieve. And that question is um, because once you think you finally got it, you just lose it. I don't think that you that once you think you finally got it, I think it's more like as you walk in it, you find more and more of the need for it, not so much as losing it, but trying to maintain it and keep it is the difficult um is what's difficult to achieve because the more we learn about humility and just how important humility is, the more we um, want to take on more and more of it. Because you know, you start out, you're humble, you're nice. And then just like as we're going through this pride, we're realizing just how important humility is. Um, through the lesson, Pastor, you spoke on last week about how some people look at it as a weakness when humility is really a strength because anybody can get up and just go to ranting and raving, but it takes a humble person to maintain composure in the midst of somebody just ranting and raving and you just remain humble. And 
you can still get your point across in humility. You don't have to fight for the spotlight. When you are humble, people don't even realize, but when you are humble, you are the spotlight because you shine, that humility shines through you and people's own arrogance and pride is brought to shame, rather they want to admit it publicly or not. It, it, it happens so often that you don't have to fight for, the, for that spotlight that prideful people and that pride wants to fight for because you, you are, you bring the light. That humility brings the light. So for me, that's my answer for question number 13. Um, it is a hard quality. And I think the more we, we learn about it, the more we realize how much we really need that quality of, of humility. So um, we have question number set, uh, eight with Sister Brittany. And um, it says, from what one thing more than anything else does pride receive the most enjoyment? Anybody wanna take a moment to just you know speak on that question? Question number eight. From what one thing more than anything else does pride receive the most enjoyment? Oh, Deaconess. I'm gonna uh, take a guess at it. I think, uh, um, dang, it just slipped my mind. I think that it would be that it wins in dividing individuals, like it, it succeeds with uh, with this uh, division when it comes to people. Just taking a guess mm -hmm. <clears throat> that it 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 um, actually uh, gets the result it won't like uh, like people going at each other, like pastors say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And nobody uh, doesn't stop. So that's my answer. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Pastor, I'll see your hand. From what one thing more than anything else does pride receive the most enjoyment? Glad you that's got me cracking up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's self exaltation. Mm. I, yeah. I, yes. I, like Satan in mm -hmm. Isaiah, mm -hmm. I will. I will. I pride in their self, my God. Yeah. I'm going to get my pride in mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you. Sister Smart. I was thinking maybe it's because when he when he when he has someone uh, 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 boasting about him, he feels good about himself when somebody's giving him praise and stuff. That makes him feel good about himself when somebody else is praising him. And you know what? All of those answers, when you really stop and think about it, it's all about. Um, Deacon S was speaking about it thinks it's it won when it divides. Pastor came and said that um, it's so, you know, it just wants to just lift itself up and just I, I. And then you come and say, I think it's when somebody else is, is um, talking and building them up and praising them. And I would say to think that those are all three good answers. It, 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 you know, it, it, it gets enjoyment from, you know, the, the dividing and I don't even know when I think about that. I don't think I, I but I know the one with pastor. Yeah. And, that's 
the and the 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 pride of building itself up and then i i i i and then the also with with sister smart you know tagging in about it feels so good when somebody else is raising it and building itself up too because it can walk around in that too so good answers sister shante I would agree with both you two ladies about um, just being about itself. Mm -hmm. Self, just that's what comes yeah. to mind. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you. So we have one, one more question. And that is question number 10. This was for Sister Arie. Why does the proud man scoff at others? Now, that's a scripture reference. That's Proverbs 21 and 24. Maybe we'll just read that because I see we kind of getting close to time. Um, why does the proud man scoff at others? And the scripture is Proverbs 21 and 24. Ooh. Proud and haughty scorners, scorner is his name, who dealeth in proud wrath. Hmm. Anyone else would like to add any? Pastor, I see your hand. That's, that's exactly what Deacon S was talking about, right there. They just wanted to cause some trouble. But what she was trying to express is uh -huh. that right there. The proud and haughty scorner is his name. He dealeth in proud wrath. He there for divisiveness, just, just always <laughs> want to start some mess. <laughs> Amen. That 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 was the answer to that one. It's just mm. uh, and, and from what I can said. I read it out of the other book. Yes, please. the other yeah. Bible. Okay, uh, the, the, this <laughs> Bible. Yeah, place. the contemporary <laughs> English version. It says, "If if you are proud and conceited, everyone will say you're a snob." <laughs> <laughs> That's what <laughs> Proverbs twenty one and twenty four out of the contemporary English version. I like that version. <laughs> yeah, if yeah, you are proud yeah, and conceited. Market. Everyone will it call you a snob. <laughs> they, they, they see you when you come. Oh, no. They yeah, know. <laughs> uh, Amen. But, uh, well, yeah. that is it for our questions. Um, I thank everybody for their participation. I think it was just a, such a good lesson. I, you know, we just yes. want to just continue to, you know, learn and apply these lessons to our heart, you know, and our life. And um, Pastor, at this time, I'm gonna turn it back over to you because, okay. and, and you can have the final say. And thank you everyone okay. for your participation. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. I'm gonna thank stop you. the uh, recording at this time. Uh, God bless everyone. We are all created in the image and likeness of God. Uh, no one is any better than anyone. Just stop the sin. Stop the sin, sin is of the devil. Amen, in Jesus' mighty name.